uh, I want to invite you to embark with me in a brand new series. And this series is entitled Desperate. Desperate. How many of you have, have experienced despair? Let me see your hands. How many of you? Despair. Despair. Have you been despair in your life? Have you ever been desperate in your life? All right. So this might be for you. We are going to do, this is what we're going to do. For the next five weeks, for the next five weeks, we are going to be studying some cases from the Bible of desperate people, desperate people. We are going to be searching what they did, what is it that the way that they reacted to that despair that we can help, that that can help us and we can use today for our benefit. So desperate is the series that we are are going to be um, on for the next weeks. Please tell everyone and invite people to uh, be blessed. Do, Do you want to be blessed tonight, today? Do you want to be blessed? You know that it doesn't depend on me, it doesn't depend on the preacher, it doesn't depend on how many years I have been putting this together or or whatever else. It depends on your connection with the one you want to speak to you today. So how many of you want the Lord to speak today? So tell him, Lord, I want you to speak to me. Lord, I want you to speak to me. Today's part number one of Desperate is entitled, Lord, help me. Lord, help me. And it's based on Matthew chapter 15, verses 21 and through 28. So let's, let's open our Bibles and read this, the first part of Desperate. Lord, help me. Matthew chapter 15, verses 21 through 28. And we are going to read this together so that we may, be, uh, uh, we may have the context in our minds. Matthew 15, 21 through 28. The Bible says, you there, friends? The Bible says, Then Jesus went out from there and departed to the region of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a woman of, of Canaan came from that region and cried out to him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, son of David, my daughter, my daughter. Is severely demon possessed. But he answered, Jesus answered her, not a word. And his disciples came and urged him, saying, Send her away, for the for she cries out after us. But he answered and said, I was not sent except to the lost ship of the house of Israel. Then she came and worshipped him, saying, Lord, help me. But he answered and said, It is not good to take the children's, the children's bread and throw it to the little dogs. The little dogs? And she said, Yes, Lord. Yet even the little dogs eat the crumbs which fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered and said to her, O oh, woman, great is your faith. Let it be to you as you desire. And her daughter was healed from that very hour. Please tell to the Lord, Lord, speak to me. I want to hear you. Lord, speak to me. Let us pray. Lord, help us to hear your voice this morning. Calm our souls so that we may be able to be blessed by you. We pray in the name of Jesus for the Holy Spirit so that we may Learn the lesson that you have chosen for us today, for your glory and your honor. We pray in the name of Jesus, and everybody say, Once a mother came to Napoleon, she was seeking for mercy for her son. The emperor replied that the young man had committed a certain crime, a certain offense twice, and justice demanded death. But I'm not asking for justice, the mother replied. I humbly beg for mercy. But your son does not deserve mercy, Napoleon replied. The poor mother cried even more. She cried. She started crying desperately now, pleaded, Lord, if it would not be mercy if he deserved, deserved mercy. And mercy is all I ask. The emperor said, well, then I will have mercy. 
and he released the son of this long-suffering woman. There is another woman that the Gospels, two of them, speak about. This is Matthew chapter 15 and Luke chapter 7. Both of them talk about this desperate woman who is coming to the Lord with a desperate, desperate request. And then we come to the passage. In, ver in the introductory verses, we find that Jesus is moving, is going to a place that is foreign to him. To a place packed with Gentile people. As a matter of fact, Matthew reports to us that the woman that comes to Jesus, is, she is not only a Gentile. For the reason why she is a Gentile is because she is Greek. She is also, the text, the text tells us this, that she also is a sire of what is called a sire of Phoenician. She was from that place. She was also, according to Mark chapter 7, she was also a Greek. A Gentile, a person that didn't have anything to do with the Jewish nation. And Jesus was sent to see, to say, to, to uh, uh, restore the Jewish nation. So, so we see that Jesus in a, is in a place where he was not supposed to be, according to our standards. But Jesus goes where he's needed. Don't know when you expect him to be. Jesus goes to this territory because he heard this woman crying out. He comes to this place because there was a person that was in need of him. He comes to this territory because somebody was calling out for help. This is our Savior. This is our God. That's how he works. He comes to you not because you deserve it. He comes to you because you need him. The woman cried out for help. And Jesus responded. The context of where this, this passage is found suggests that this was the only woman that was in need here, th there. In other words, Jesus comes to this territory just for this person. We don't see any other miracle happening around. Jesus came only for this person. And did I tell you that this woman, this person was a woman? Did I tell you that this person was a Greek? Did I tell you that this person was a sire of a nation? Did I tell you that this woman was a Gentile? Jesus came to this territory just for this Gentile. Wow. Wow. The woman comes to Jesus and says, Lord, Lord, son of David. Son of David. You see, this woman who was a Gentile is proclaiming somebody that the, that the Jews were supposed to accept and proclaim as the son of David. You know what she was saying by saying son of David? She was saying, this is the right royal um, um, lineage of King David. He is a king himself. She, this woman, by calling Jesus son of David, is proclaiming Jesus as the Messiah, as the, as the so long-awaited Messiah. A Gentile. A woman. A Greek. Friends, it's so shameful when people out there recognize God more than those who belong to his family. It's so shameful when people out there, secular people, worldly people, believe more in the God that we proclaim than the ones that, that call Christians, than the ones that call church members. It's so shameful when people out there have more faith than us. She comes and says, have mercy, have mercy. And listen, friends, she says, have mercy on me. Have mercy on me. Wait, wait. And then she says, my daughter is seriously tormented by a demon. Do you hear, friends? She says, have mercy on me. But she wasn't the one with the problem. The one with the problem was the daughter. Why would she say, have mercy on me? Because this is a mother. Because this is a mother. And mothers, you know, you know, when, when somebody mess, messes with your children, they mess with you. When something, when something attacks your child, that something is attacking you. 
And this, this is why this woman is coming to Jesus. This is why this woman is taking this on, on her shoulders. And she says, I have a problem. It is my problem. Help me. Have mercy on me. See, everything was wrong about this. The, 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 woman, the woman had all the nationalities. She was a Canaanite. Right? She was a, a Syrophoenician. She was a Greek. All the nations except the Jewish nation. She has all the nationalities. She has all the citizenships except the one that she needed at this point. Don't, don't, miss, don't miss the details when you come to the Bible. This woman, to come to Jesus, she had to overcome, she had to overcome her racial background. Listen, friends. Listen, this, this is powerful. She had to overcome her ethnicity. She had to overcome her cultural prejudices and come in desperate search of Jesus because what that's what you do when you desperate when you desperate you don't care who's looking at you when you desperate you don't care where you lo- you go to look for help when you desperate you just want solutions she cries out Jesus Jesus this, this is this is how how we how we know how we know how desperate person she was she comes with a cry to Jesus. She comes because she, she um, has an unsolvable problem. She is coming to Jesus uh, when desperate. Th- think about this. Just think about this. How different life will be if we were to come to Jesus when life is at peace. Why, why don't we always look for Jesus when we are in trouble? Why do we always look for God when... When we have tried everything else. Why don't we always wait till the end to finally look for Jesus? Life will be much more different, much more better and different if we, are, if we were to look for Jesus when everything goes fine. Because when trouble comes, you will be so used to receiving blessings from Jesus that you will not get on the desperate mode. Somebody should be getting this. Please, friends, let's not wait till despair hits our lives to look for him. Please. The woman says, Lord, son of David, Lord, have mercy on me. Have mercy on me. And of course, Jesus will react that right away because Jesus is a, is a long-suffering God. Jesus is a, is a compassionate Savior, right? So she, he will react right away. Right away, he will say, okay, what do you want? Here, here is the answer. You will expect that from Jesus, don't you? But the, the text doesn't say that. The text said that Jesus, this is verse 23, the first part. It says that Jesus did not answer her a word. This woman is crying out. This woman even, even, even uh, comes, this woman comes to Jesus, forgetting about that she was a woman, a Canaanite, uh, uh, a Gentile, a Greek, forgetting about that everyone will be pointing at her, forgetting about the shame, forgetting about everything else. She comes to Jesus because her daughter, she was coming from somebody else. She was even now looking after benefits for herself. She was coming representing somebody else and she expected Jesus to answer and instead of Jesus answering he goes silent because there are moments when God decides to go silent because there are moments when you come when you and I come to God that he decides to go silent the problem is that if you are like me that when all we hear is silence, all we hear, all we receive is not having answers, despair comes. Discouragement comes. Depression comes. Disappointment comes. Disheartening comes. Amen, somebody? Have you been there? Have you experienced that? You, t- you pray and pray and pray and the situation doesn't change. You pray and pray and pray, and God says, not a word. This woman, she was desperate. And see, friends, when you're desperate, you insist. You persist. 
you continue. You keep on knocking because you're desperate. You want answers. You want solutions. You want a problem solved. You keep on doing it. But why would Jesus do this to a desperate woman? Why will he go silent at this moment? And, and, and to make the, the matters worse, verse 23 in, ver, in, in the second part will report that those who are closer, closest to Jesus, they reacted in a different way that you will expect. Okay, Jesus is not acting in the way that you will expect. And now the ones around Jesus are not acting in the way you will expect. This is what we find in, this, in the second part of, of, of verse 23. And his disciples, the disciples of Jesus, came and urged Jesus, saying, send her away. A mother, listen, friends, a, a desperate mother is coming to the, the miracle maker, the one that has a solution. A desperate mother is coming on behalf of her daughter, and instead of Jesus saying something, he doesn't say anything. But to make matters worse, the disciples said, send her away. She's bothering us. Send her away. And, and so, it's so it's so easy to point back and say, these disciples, were they were crooked. They were just bad people. How would they react like that? How would they react like that? Things haven't changed too much. Because many people come to church looking for God. Come to you looking for God. Come to me looking for God. And more than often, we send them away. More than often, friends, we send them away. God bring, brings people to us, and more than often, we send them away. Just like the disciples. We are, it's like, it's like the church is, is full, is, is specialized in alienating people from Jesus, instead of bringing the G people to Jesus, we send people away instead of bringing people to Jesus. It's so sad that this hasn't changed much. It's so sad that we are still doing this. People are looking to Jesus, and sometimes because they have seen you with a Bible, because they have seen you on your knees, they come to you to see if that whether you can introduce them to Jesus or not, and instead of doing so, which is what you're being called for, you send them away. And so at this moment, when they are looking for Jesus, they come to you look, uh, uh, to find Jesus, and you send them away, Satan comes to their minds. The devil comes and say, to discourage them and say, they are not worthy. This is not worthy. Just go out. You will find better friends out there. And that's why the majority is out there and not here. That's one of the reasons. Friends, I, I, I think we have to change. I don't know what you think about this. But I think, I think we, we, not, we need to allow the Holy Spirit to change our hearts. Because if we continue going this way. Rejecting people instead of attracting people. One day, our very own children will go away from Jesus. One day, our very own spouses will go away from Jesus. One day, people that we, we care for because of our behaviors, because of our compromises will go away from Jesus. And you will say, what is the big deal with that? One day, if you make it, if I make it, Jesus will come to me and say, where are those people that I brought to you? Where are they? Have I, underst have, have I understood that this is my responsibility also? Have I understood that the Lord saved me so that I can bring salvation? Ministry of reconciliation is what Paul calls this to others. Okay, finally, finally, let's, let's go back to the text. Finally, uh, it's time for Jesus to respond, and, uh, to respond. And you will say, okay, now Jesus will be Jesus. And in verse 24, you find, he answered and said, okay, Jesus, be our Savior. I was not sent except to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. What? 
Jesus is speaking this way. Elsa, you would not expect Jesus to speak in this way, right? Why would Jesus say something like this? What is Jesus trying to do? I mean, after a long silence, Jesus responds. Jesus responds with discriminatory, nationalistic words. At least, that's what it seems to be in the text. See, Jesus breaks the silence to say, you are a Canaanite. There is nothing for you. Why? Jesus breaks the silence to say, the blessings are not for you. Jesus breaks the silence to give more tests to the woman. And here it is. The word test is included right now because this is the right time for you and for me to see what Jesus is doing here. Test. Test. See, see, if it were me, after all this, I'm waiting, I'm coming, I'm desperate, I'm, I'm putting my soul out to Jesus, and he decides to go silence, and after a long silence, he decides to break that and brings this kind of talk to me, I will turn around and leave. But not this woman. Why? Because this woman was desperate. She was desperate. Jesus was testing this woman. He was testing this woman. Why will God test his people? That's a good question that we need to answer, friends. And the story will answer it for us. There is something that Jesus has in his hands that he decided to, to stretch this test a little more so that this woman would experience whatever experience he wanted her to have. See, one thing that you and I need to know when tests come our lives when testing times come our lives, one thing that we need to know is that, is that He will not give you more than what you can take. God will not give you more than what you can take. And this is, this is found in the Bible, right? No test, no test has overtaken you except such as is common to men. But God is faithful. God is what, friends? He's faithful. Who will not allow you to be tested Beyond what you are able, but with a test, will also make the way of escape that you may be able to bear it. Could it just be, listen, friends, could it just be that what Jesus was trying to do here, not thinking about this was a Gentile woman, non Jew woman, but thinking about somebody that he could save, he could be just testing this woman. What is test for? What is test for? Let's continue with the text to see what Jesus is trying to do here. So, Jesus says, the blessings are not for you after the long silence. In other words, just go away. I will not do anything for you. But remember, this was a desperate mother. Not only desperate, but a mother. And she comes back. She comes back in verse 25 and she says, then she came and worshipped. She, she came and worshipped Jesus, saying, Lord, help me. Because this is what desperate people do. The fact that God is not speaking back to you. The fact that God is not bringing the solution immediately as you would like to have it. Doesn't mean that he is not after something. But you have to continue. You have to insist. You have to persist and say, Lord, Lord, help me. Why? Because you need help. Why? Because you desperate. Why? Because you know he is the only one who can bring a solution to your life. The word worship is very interesting there in, the, in, in this verse. The word worship is a compound word. Let's put it on the screen for them. Proskuneo is the word. Two words, pros, kuneo. Now, let me tell you something very interesting about this word. The, the word pros, kuneo uh, simply means someone's, so, someone kissing someone else's hand when prostrated. That's what the word means, pros, kuneo. But listen, listen, friends. The second word that makes, makes up this word pros, kuneo is the word kuneo. The word kuneo comes from the uh, Greek, the root uh, Greek word of this word means dog. Yes, 
You heard right. Dog, D-O-G. That's what the word means. Now, why, how will you make the connection between a dog and worshiping? Why will this word will be the root word for, for the word to worship? Don't you think that's very interesting? Well, some, some theologians believe that this word pros, proskuneo actually comes from the act of a dog licking his master's hand. A dog licking his master, master's hand. So think about this, friends. She is this desperate woman now. She is prostrated like a puppy to kiss the hand of Jesus. She was desperate. She was desperate. In, in, in my despair, in your despair, when you, when you are desperate, this is the one counsel that we find that we learn from this desperate woman. Fall on your knees before Jesus. When, when you hit, when, when you hit uh, uh, the bottom of everything in your life, when you don't find any other solution, any other way, any other road, any other option, fall on your knees before Jesus. Fall on your knees before Jesus. Why? Why would you fall on your knees before Jesus? Because though he's not answering, he may not be answering. Though you may not have found the answer or the solution yet, he is always after something. Always. And again, the next verse is like, this is time, right? Long wait, a long wait. And then he was cruel by answering, saying, there is no blessings for you. You're not a Jew. I didn't come for you. And now, in verse 26, you will think, this is the time for Jesus to finally act. How much is he going to stretch it? In verse 26, he's not yet done with this woman. Verse 26 says, it is not good to take the children's bread and throw it to the dogs. And this is what King James Version uses. New King James Version would say little dog. But King James Version says dog simply. Man, simply. And now, now listen friends. This, this woman is being called by Jesus a dog. What is Jesus trying to do here? Why is he, is he acting as without feelings, without love? This is so strange. Jesus seems to be not moved by the despair and distress of this poor woman. What is Jesus trying to do here? Sometimes, friends, sometimes God acts as if he is not a gentle. He acts as, acts as he didn't care. He acts sometimes as if he were not loving. Have you ever received such, such test from God? Friends, friends, please listen to me. When this happens, when you hear that, when you experience that kind of experience, when this happens, be in good cheer. This is why. Because a greater blessing is coming your way. You thought you, all that you needed as a desperate woman was for your daughter to be, to be healed, to be delivered. The woman, the desperate woman thought, all that I need is for my, my daughter to receive your power. That's a good blessing. That's a fair blessing. That's a fair request. But Jesus not only gives you what you need, he gives you more than what you need. Do not be discouraged. God has a greater blessing in mind for you. You receive silence. You have received Cruelty, apparent cruelty. You have received uh, hard words. Don't be discouraged. A greater blessing is coming your way. Now, remember that Jesus called this woman a dog, a dog. And, and this word dog, again, is the, is the Greek word, let's put it on the screen for them, kunarion. The Greek word kunarion. Now, this word kunarion has the same root word as worship. The Greek word that means, anyone? Dog. But kuong is not kunario. Kuong is the, do the Greek word for, for dog. 
That's not the word there. It's cunarium, which means it's a different kind of dog. You know what kind of dog is, it is? A puppy. Jesus is not calling her a dog. That's not the word that he used for this woman. Puppy. Little dog. See, see friends, whatever, little dogs or dogs is dog at the end, right? This is just too much to bear. This is what we're reading here in this text. is just too much to bear. Not only was Jesus telling her that he, that he is acting in favoritism, but now he is calling her a dog. What are you doing, Jesus? What are you doing, Jesus? Verse 27 will tell us what Jesus is doing. This was enough, don't you think? No matter how desperate I, 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 I might be, if somebody behaves like this with me, I will just turn around and, and leave. And I, and I, I have, I have the, the, uh, the suspicion that most of us will do the same thing. We just turn around and leave. Not this woman. Why? Because this woman was desperate. She was desperate. Most likely, she has tried everything and nothing worked. And this is the last, the last chance, the last option that she had. And she was desperate to receive the solution that she needed for her daughter. Desperate. So after being called dog, little dog, she comes back. She comes back again. Verse 27 says, and she said, yes, Lord, yet even the little dogs eat the crumbs which fall from the master, their master's table. Notice now. Notice this, friends. She humbly accepts that she's a little dog. She humbly accepts that. She doesn't question that. She just said, okay, that's fine. I accept that. You call me like that, that must be, that was me, me. That must be me. Right? But she doesn't end there. You can see the, the humility, which is a, a great characteristic of those who want to be blessed by God. You can see that in the text. But doesn't end there because she argues back. She argues with Jesus based on the fact that she, that she was a dog. Okay, sir. Okay, Lord, I'm a dog. I'm a dog. But even dogs have needs. What is about dogs? Why, why would Jesus use that here? Why will this woman accept that she's a dog? What is about this, friends? Dogs are humble. Have you noticed that? Do you have a, how many of you have dogs at home? They are humble. They, they, don't, they don't run and, and jump on the table and, try and start eating the, your food. They were on one side just waiting for whatever you throw at them to eat. And even you throw little to nothing to them, they will be happy and they will celebrate and they will enjoy it. That's how dogs are. See, friends, you don't know about street dogs here. In this country, you don't see street dogs. I, at least I haven't seen them. And I have covered... A lot of uh, states here in this, in this country. But when you go to an uh, underdeveloping uh, country, you will find uh, street dogs everywhere pretty much. Now, there is something very interesting about street dogs. They're always hungry. They're always in need. And they're always desperate for food. They come to people, tourists. They come to people that they, they see they might be able to provide to them. And they don't ask for a bay, uh, a pound a piece of beef. You throw in a little cracker and they celebrate for that. And they are happy for that. And they go away as if they have received a banquet. Dogs. Dogs. So Jesus, Jesus, Jesus hears what the woman said and now he goes on verse 28 and now we see the reaction. And finally, Jesus is acting as Jesus. 28. Then Jesus answered and said to her, Oh woman, oh woman, great is your faith. Let it be to you as you desire. Oh woman, oh woman. See, friends, this, is, this was the most exalted, respectful way to call a woman. Jesus just called this woman a dog, and right after her reaction, he calls it the greatest 
he gives her the greatest title to a person. Oh, woman. You don't believe me? Remember Jesus re addressing his own mother. He calls her woman. At the, at the, uh, at the, uh, before the, the miracle of wine, water to wine and so on. And then at the cross, again, woman, here is your son, woman. That's the greatest, the greatest title, the greatest uh, way that Jesus will address to a woman. That's what Jesus is doing now. Jesus is restoring this woman at this moment. Jesus is bringing in front of everyone, this is a woman, this is not a Gentile, this is not a dog, this is not a Canaanite, this is my daughter. Oh, woman. No longer a dog, no longer just a woman, but a real woman, a real woman. Jesus says, because you are a real woman, now make yourself as you want. Just let it be as you desire. See, this, this is so key. This, this thought here is key, friends, because Jesus, if you go on the Gospels and just read every chapter... Pretty much every, every chapter is an, is an argument, is a debate that Jesus was always having with these leaders at that time. So Jesus has spent a lot of time debating with the greatest minds of, his, of this nation. The most educated, the most prepared, yet he always won every single one of the arguments. Except this one. This time was different. He said, after all the, the argument, let it be to you as you desire. You are right. You are right. This woman, friends, this woman is the only one in the whole New Testament who won an argument against Jesus. The only one. Why did he do that? Why did she do that? Because she was desperate. Because when you are desperate, you don't give up. Because when you are desperate, you, run, you don't run away. Because you are desperate, you are not ashamed. When you are desperate, you keep on going. When you are desperate, you keep on asking. When you are desperate, you keep on knocking. She argued with God and overcame. Do you remember somebody that experienced that? Jacob. Jacob. And the Bible reports to end this. And her daughter was healed that very hour. Her daughter was free from Satan. Free from chains. Free from torment. Free from suffering. Her daughter was now sober again. Sane again. Happy again. Healthy again. Loving again. Good again. Now parents, parents, parents. Is your child free? Is your child saved? Do you need a miracle of Jesus for your child? Are you desperate about the salvation of your child? Are you desperate? Are you praying so desperately? Are you asking so desperately? Are you coming to Jesus so desperately so that you may receive that blessing that you're asking for your child? Why, why do you think that Jesus did not answer this woman's request quickly? Why not? Let me answer it for you, friends. Because Jesus had more blessings that she was requesting. Jesus planned not only to bless her daughter, but also to bless her mother. Jesus wanted this woman's faith to be strengthened. And that's why the test was necessary. He will not give you what you cannot bear. He will give you what he knows because he's all-knowing, because he's, he's been there in your future. He knows the kind of person that you are going to become. If you think life is too unfair to you, if you think that that suffering is too painful, if you think that the problems are just too much, if you think you are about to quit, do not quit because a blessing is around the corner. Don't despair for the tests. 
get desperate to come to the divine tester and live. This woman teaches us a person that didn't know anything about church. A person that didn't know anything about the scriptures. A person that wasn't educated on the scriptures. A person that hasn't been in the years that we have been in church can teach us something about our relationship with the Lord. Friends, the apparent, this is to, to conclude, the apparent, the apparent offenses were too much to bear. But she acted like she had no feelings and thus won a victory. This woman won a victory for love and faith. Her love for her daughter and her faith in Jesus. That's how she won, she won this great victory. Friend, friend, I'm going to speak to you. I'm going to speak to you today, friend. Friend, friend, on, on your... On the other end of these cameras, I'm speaking to you. When Jesus does not answer a word, when God is silent, do not give up. Do not be discouraged. Friend, friend, here. When a so-called follower of Jesus offends you, do not be discouraged. Do not leave Jesus. Or do not leave the church. Friend, listen, friend. When Jesus responds with apparent favoritism, do not give up. Persist until you receive your blessing, his blessing. The friend, the friend, listen, listen. Come back, come back, listen. When Jesus responds, with apparent cruelty. Do not be discouraged, but rather fall on your knees before Jesus. Friend, 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 when God tests you, do not be discouraged because in the end, He will respond to you with praise, with blessings. Listen, friends, tests are divinely designed for you to become stronger. A story is told of a good man who lived in the countryside, but he had physical problems. One day Jesus appeared to him, that's what the story says, and said, I need you to go to that great rock on the mountain, and I ask you to push it every day during one year. One year. Every day, the man will come from sunset to sunset and push that big, big boulder and push it and push it. Day after day, he will come and push the rock, push the rock, push the rock, and the rock will now move an inch. Day after day, he will come and push it and push it. And some days he would get discouraged because nothing was happening. He thought that, well, I am a failure. I am a failure. I'm supposed to move this rock and the rock is not moving. I am a failure. Satan, Satan will come along and say, you are a failure. Why would you push that rock? You will not be able to push it. Stop pushing. Give up. Go away. Look for something else. Don't obey. Don't obey. This is an impossibility. Don't do it. Despise, despite of the, of the words, demonic words, Satan, he continued pushing the rock every single day. Push it and push it. Until the 365 days passed. And he thought, I'm a failure. I'm a failure. Yes, yes, my, my, I feel much better. My arms are bigger. My body is stronger. I don't feel pain anymore. But the rock didn't move. And Jesus comes again. And he says, why are you saying that? Why are you using, why do you have that attitude? My goal was to make you stronger. And the stronger you are. Your pain is not with you anymore. 
Your suffering is not with you anymore. You are not having any physical problems anymore. I never ask you to push. I never ask you to move the rock. I only ask you to push the rock. Friends, what is that rock? What is that rock that the Lord has been asking you and asking you to push? And you have been trying and trying and trying to move. Think about what the Lord is asking you to do. And follow that to the letter. Don't go right, don't go left. Push it. Because the more you push, the stronger you get. May the Lord bless us. And may He continue coming to the rescue when we call up, when we cry out, Lord, help me. Let's pray. Father, we don't like tests. We just don't like them, Father. Because sometimes those tests hurt. But anyone that has worked out, that has worked out, knows the pain is gain. Help us to know, Lord, that when we follow your instructions, if suffering, pain comes along, it's just temporary. Because the victory that comes at the end is eternal. Help us to fix our minds on the one that has, has won this war for each one of us. So we may be found pushing and pushing the rock and getting stronger as we obey the words of our Savior. Father, thank you so much for everyone that came today. Thank you so much for those who said, who said with their hearts and meaning what they said, Lord, speak to us. Thank you for speaking to them. Father, I pray for those that are on the other end of these cameras, that they may also continue pushing. Bless them and bless us all. This is our prayer in the wonderful name of Jesus. Amen.